bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior, so pure and free from sin. They said, crucify him, he is to blame. He could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the world. And set him free. He called of gold ten thousand angels, but he died alone for you and me. Upon his precious head they placed a crown of thorns. They laughed and said, Behold the king. They struck him and they cursed him and mocked his holy name. Alone he suffered everything. He could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called ten thousand angels, but he died alone for you and me. When they nailed him to the cross, his mother stood nearby. He said, Woman, behold thy son. He cried, I thirst for water, but they give me not to drink. Then sinful work of man was done. He could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called ten thousand angels, but he died alone for you and me. To the howling mob he yielded, he did not mercy cry. The cross of shame he took alone. And when he cried, it's finished, he gave himself to die. Salvation wondrous plan was done. Could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called ten thousand angels, but he died alone. But he died alone for you and me. For our scripture reading, please open your Bibles with me to the book of John, chapter 6, verses 67 to 68. Chapter 6 of John, verses 67 to 68. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? 
Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou, thou hast the words of eternal life. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. That was a very great special Hi, music. Hi. He could have called 10,000 angels because of our sins. He, um, he suffered and died. So we are thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ. Without his, his blood, there will be no forgiveness of sins. We thank God for that. Shall we have a word of prayer? Mighty God, no one is sufficient to stand behind this pulpit and preach. I cannot even speak, and I dare not speak my own words. So, Father, may your word be, be spoken through me, and you have the glory. We thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The faithful few, the faithful few. It is very, very important that we belong to the faithful few. It is very essential that we belong to the children of God. We have to be in the Word and among His children. Because God does not work in the majority. He always works in the minority. The majority is not, they are not always right. The few always listen to the voice of God. And this morning, we shall be going through few individuals in the word of God who obeyed the word of God so we can use that pattern for our lifestyle in these last days. Shall we turn to the book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 1? The book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 1. If you have your Bible, please turn to the book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 1. And let's have a word of the word of God. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. We all know what happened before the flood came to the earth. The world was in chaos, sin everywhere. Nobody gave homage, respect to Jehovah, God the Father. The world, everybody was working according to his own plan. And God needed to save the world. And he was looking for somebody, an individual, a family to work through. He needed somebody to stand in the gap so that he could save the whole world. And when he looked, he found Noah, because Noah was the only one, not the only one, among the brethren who were always looking before God, seeking for directions, and being righteous before God at the time. Noah was a man of prayer. Noah was a man who loved the Lord. And when we love the Lord, God is willing to use us in his service. When Noah obeyed the, the voice of God, he was able, through God, through Noah, God saved his family. In these last days, as we are approaching the end times, God is seeking individuals. 
God is seeking an entire family to save your own household. There shall be one individual in the family who is willing to be obedient to the word of God, as Noah did. It is not easy in these last days to live a righteous lifestyle. But God is willing to give us the power to obey him, to be used by him. Enoch was a faithful man. Enoch was a faithful man. And Enoch, through his faithfulness, God translated him into heaven. And there was a quote, there's a quote in this prayer of prophecy, last day's event, that touched my heart. And I'm hoping that you may be touched with this word as well. Enoch is said to say that he refused to take any cause that would offend his God. He refused to take any cause that would offend his God. What are some of the causes that we do that offend God in these last days? Even, even, if, even if we are not living the last days, we should live a lifestyle that will bring, that will attract the divine Godhead in our lifestyle. He kept the Lord continually before him. He will pray, teach me thy way, that I may not err. What is thy pleasure concerning me? What shall I do to honor thee, my God? Thus he was constantly shaping his way and cause in the accordance of God's commandments. Are we seeking the face of God as individuals in the family? A church family? Do we wake up in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening? Do we stay the word of God in these last days? Let's turn to the memory verse that was read by Dr. Sudbika. John chapter 6, verse 6, 67 to 68. John, 60, John chapter 6, verses 67 to 68. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Before that, we can say that from verse 59 to 67, God was preaching to a whole multitude. A whole lot of people, but they could not stay for the words of God because he was saying some things that they couldn't understand. The faithful few always spend time with God. No matter the situation, we must always be in light with Jehovah, with God the Father. The light of heaven is shining our hearts. The light of heaven will shine on those who have relation with Jesus Christ one on one. In the Old Testament, we could see that Daniel and his three brothers obeyed God, and God used them to save Israel. God used them to show that He had power in these last days. God is looking for a faithful few. I always say that it doesn't matter where you are in this world. As long as we remain faithful to God, come what may, we shall have divine protection in these last days. There shall be always be faithful few in the last days. Elijah thought that he was the only one left worshiping God. And God told him that I have 7,000 who had now bowed their knees to bow, to bail. Are we obeying God in these last days? Are we obeying God? Are we giving him the 
the, um, the respect that he deserves? Are we willing to be among the faithful few in these last days? This morning, my short word is this. If we should die today, are we sure that we have made peace with God? Do we have sins that nobody knows about in our heart? Do we fast and pray? Do we seek his face? Do we take matters word? The word of God is so powerful. Whatever the God has spoken is for the faithful few. Those who have connection with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. God is calling everybody in these last days to be faithful. And he has given us the power through the Holy Spirit to do that. In our strength, we cannot obey God. This morning, once again, my church family, I can't hold you for too long. Just one word. Let's be among the faithful few. Let's get away from the things that break the heart of God. The faithful few will always abide in the presence of God. God does not work in the majority. I, was, I have said that before. I'm going to say that again. The disciples, Peter told Jesus Christ, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast eternal life. The rest left Jesus Christ, but the twelve did not leave him. Are we going to leave our Savior, even if our parents, your dad, your mom, decide to let go of God, would you forsake Jesus Christ in these last days? Because salvation is an individual affair. We are helping each other, praying for one another, but we cannot build character for one another. This morning... Please, everybody, let's be among the faithful few. God's love for the faithful few, stated in the um, Ellen G. White book, E.G. White writings, early writing chapter 4. She said that I have seen the love of God for his children. It is deep. He loves, God loves the whole world. He loves the Adventist church. He loves everybody who have given his life to Jesus Christ. And when we give our lives to him, come what may, he shall save us. But if we decide to give our life to the world, we want to enjoy the, um, the, dev- the devil's stuff, we cannot be among the faithful few. Therefore, we cannot enjoy the protection of Jesus Christ. In short, my first sermon this year, I preach about new year, new life. The faithful few always have a new life every single day. What we did last week, by God's grace, we can't do this week. So to the youth we, and to adults, let's follow righteousness, holiness, pray without ceasing, live in the presence of God and study the word of God every single day. For the word of God will transform the heart, will transform the home, will transform everybody. And with the word of God, we shall gain victory over sin. Faithful few, faithful souls shall not fail God because they have the protection of Jehovah. In short, in closing, my word this morning, 
Let's be among the faithful few. Let's not depart from Jesus Christ. Let's be like John and the disciples. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go? So now Jesus Christ is telling everybody, you and I, shall we also leave him or shall we stay with him? What should be our response? Where else can we go? We go to Jesus Christ. Holy Divine, this is our vow, Heavenly Father. We ask you that you help us to be among the faithful few and help us to have faith in thee. Help us to study your word and help us to refrain from sin. For sin is ascetic. Sin will bring distraction to our lives. And may your Holy Spirit help us to obey your word. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen.